Welcome everyone to another Mission Majima. Today we're very fortunate, as you can see, to have Bhikkhu Bodhi, the editor compiler of Venerable Nyanamoli's uh, translation of the Majima Nikaya, our whole, uh, our whole focus on study. So Bhante, thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you. So today we're going to go over the Mahasihanada Sutta, Majima number 12. So just in, in brief summary, so in this sutta we find uh, a former monk named Sunakata who's deriding the Buddha and saying that the Buddha is not showing or maybe doesn't even have psychic powers and he's uh, displeased by that and the Buddha gets word of this and then actually talks about the ten Tathagata powers, the ten powers of a fully enlightened Buddha in the four intrepidities, so the ways that uh, one is so firmly on the path and, and has this... Um, yeah, fully solid knowledge. And then the Buddha talks about the various austerities that he did mm. um, before attaining enlightenment. Mm. And so there's a very, very rich sutta. And um, yeah, Bhante would l love to just draw out mm. some of these uh, with yourself. So I uh, was just amazed just a moment ago you were able to say each of the 10 um, Tathagata Balas from memory. Would mm. you be willing to refresh our, our memory on this? Okay, so the first is that the Buddha knows things that are possible and impossible. And in the Majjhima Nikaya, in Sutta number 115, one finds a kind of list of the things that are possible and impossible. The Sutta on the Lion's Roar doesn't elaborate on that. Okay, so the second knowledge is the knowledge of karma and the different destinations to which karma leads, the sort of fruits or results of karma. The third is that said to be the knowledge of the paths going everywhere, that the Buddha knows the different paths of conduct that lead to the different destinations or realms of rebirth. So here we have three. Then the Buddha knows this world system with its various elements, with its di numerous and diverse elements. <laughs> okay, then he knows the different dispositions and inclinations in the minds of sentient beings. Then he knows the superior and inferior condition of the spiritual faculties and persons. That's the faculties of faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration, wisdom, whether they're inferior or superior. Okay, the next, the Buddha knows the different kinds of samadhis and jhanas and samapattis with regard to their defilement, their purification, the entrance into them, and the emergence from them. Then come the three that are included in the, also the three higher knowledges, that is the knowledge, the recollection of one's past births, past lives, then the divine eye by which one could see how beings pass away and take rebirth in accordance with their karma, and then the tenth is the knowledge of the destruction of the asavas, the fundamental defilements. Did I get them all? That, I think that's it. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's a rather amazing list. And um, as you and I have been talking about it recently, this is exactly what kind of, um, well, an arahant has realized that last, um, you know, an arahant is yeah. free from the asavas, but the not, well, and perhaps the last, two before that, yeah. these psychic powers, some arahants have that. Yeah. But before that, these are things which um, make a Buddha, a Buddha, exactly, maybe yeah. over and above an arahant. Exactly, yeah. Would you want to give any more context for the importance of this list and how it fits into a Theravada understanding of awakening and, and a Buddha? Yeah, well, those are, as I've said, special powers that are, those first seven that are unique to a Buddha and I think that they are, in fact, the 
the statement about the ten powers continues and says that it's by virtue of possessing these powers, the Buddha speaking metaphorically, that he claims the place of the chief bull in the herd and he's able to roar his lion's roar in the assemblies. So in effect, what these ten powers, and especially the first seven are doing, the seven that are unique to the Buddha, is that they are establishing the Buddha's status as being, we call us the world teacher, the absolutely reliable spiritual master who is able to guide us through the whole maze of samsara, like arahats can have the three last knowledges there. And of course they reach the liberation through the destruction of the asavas, but they don't have those, the first, they don't have in their fullness the first seven knowledges because that is necessary to establish one as the founder of the sasana, the founder of the, of the spiritual path. And that is what makes the Buddha the refuge for the world, you could say. Gosh, we could go so deeply into any one of these yeah, ten yeah. balas, but maybe just for the sake of time going into the four intrepidities. Could you describe what those are as well? Yeah, the four intrepidities, that's a rather <laughs> learned word. Let's mm. say the four grounds of self-confidence. Mm. Yeah, they're not within the ten Tathagata pow powers, but they're sort of supplementary. So one the Buddha says that nobody can claim that there are certain dhammas, certain things that the Buddha has not become fully enlightened about, that he has not fully understood. And that, according to the commentaries, entails an implicit claim to omniscience uh -huh. in the sense of knowing the nature of all dhammas, not mm -hmm. knowing every individual facts. Mm -hmm like how many birds were in the flock that we saw this morning. Right. <laughs> okay. okay. The second is the, the Buddha can have the confidence that nobody can claim that there are certain dhammas, uh, I'm sorry, that there are certain asavas or defilements that he has not eradicated. So this is what the Buddha shares with the arahats, that he's fully eradicated all the defilements. The third is the Buddha says that nobody could claim, but that the Buddha nobody can say that there are certain things that the Buddha has declared to be obstructions that will not obstruct one who mm. indulges in them. Mm. And then the fourth is that nobody can claim that if one undertakes the practice taught by the Buddha and fully engages with it, it will not lead to the end of dukkha. Mm -hmm. Maybe just briefly going into some of the austerities that the Buddha did before becoming enlightened. Some people might have the idea that before becoming a Buddha, as a bodhisattva, he was just always a perfect spiritual warrior and is just you know, fully perfecting mm -hmm. every quality. But here we find quite misguided paths and that's often the case in the uh, Theravada Pali Canon where you find that he acknowledges that what he was doing before becoming enlightened is often misguided. Uh, yeah, he details so many different types of called misguided practices, mm. like exposing himself to the heat of the sun in the middle of the day with fires around him, yeah. plunging into cold water during the depth of the winter, um, fasting, for long periods, um, sleeping on beds of thorns, and so on. We usually just keep it to 10 minutes, but uh, it's so rare that we would have you. Is there anything else that you'd like to draw out of this sutta? Yeah, there's another interesting passage which comes between the, it comes after the 10 powers and the four grounds of self-confidence, where the Buddha says that he can be observing a person and seeing that person's conduct, and based on his perception of that person's conduct, he knows that if that person were to die <laughs> at that moment, he would be reborn in this case of one, he'll be reborn in the hell realm, and the case of another, he might be reborn as an animal, in the third case, he might be reborn in the realm of the 
of praetors, the afflicted spirits. Another will be reborn as a human being. Another will be reborn as a deva. And another, if he fo continues following on this course of practice, he will attain final nibbana in that life. Yeah. And then the Buddha illustrates each of those perceptions with very, very vivid uh, cogent similes. Mm. Maybe just one other point there. Some people believe that the Buddha could completely know the future, and it seems like there's a qualified way of understanding that. Yeah. Um, some people would say if the Buddha could fully know the future, then there's no free yeah, will. Yeah. Could you briefly touch on that point? Of this is just my personal opinion. Yeah. Even though I think the commentaries, or even the text like the Panti Sambhita Magga say, he fully knows the past, fully knows the present, fully knows the future. But it doesn't seem reasonable to me that one could fully know the future in all details. Since, as you said, if you could fully know the future, how a particular person will behave you know, 10, 20 years from now, mm -hmm. then that person doesn't really have free choice, free will. So he just sees maybe the principles, how... Yeah, tendencies, yeah, tendencies. I would tendencies. say. That seems reasonable to me. Yeah. Gosh, I wish these were hour and a half or two hour long mission majimas, but uh, mm. maybe just for the sake of our word of the week, the word of the week is tathagata. So uh, this can mean literally one who is thus come or one who is thus gone. And there's uh, one sutta which talks about different other meanings of it. As one speaks, so one does. Mm. Is there anything else you'd like to pull out of that word, Tathagata? Yeah, in the commentary to the Brahmajala Sutta, I actually translated this passage. It's in the All Embracing That of Views. The commentary provides, I think, eight explanations of Tathagata. And of course, these are like fanciful explanations. We should, don't have to believe that this was the original intention of the word. But the commentary sort of uses that word almost to read the entire Dhamma into the word Tathagata. Mm -hmm. So we have eight explanations of the word Tathagata. And then I think the Tika or sub-commentary provides a few more explanations. Bhante, thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us. Um, yeah, what a pleasure and an honor. And mm -hmm. people can join us next week for Mishimajima Majima Nikaya number 13. Thank you, Bhante. Mm -hmm.